Hello, so this video is going to be about differentiating the function uh, arc cos of 1 over x. So that's what we want to do in this video. Um, obviously, we can see from here that, uh, that the function can't be defined at x equal to 0 because uh, we got this 1 over 0 uh, inside the function. So we know that for a fact. Um, and in fact, let's just check the domain and range of this arc, uh, sorry, arc cos of 1 over x function. So we can do that by actually checking the domain and the range of the arc cos of just x function. Um, so if we do that just by sketching a graph. Um, so yeah, if we sketch a graph of this arc cos function, it looks something like this. So it goes from zero up to pi. You've got like a y intercept of pi to there. And the domain, so it goes from minus one up to one. So you can see the domain of this function is essentially the x values of the modulus less than one. And we can see the range of this function is from zero up to pi. Okay, so we know that then. Uh, that's just a sketch of the arc cos function. So in this video, we want to worry about the arc cos of one over x function. So if we consider this function, arc cos of one over x, well, that means the domain, so the domain for this function is going to be modulus of one over x is less than one just by using this information there. Um, and so therefore, I mean, this is exactly the same as saying that the modulus of x is greater than one. OK, so we know that that is our domain and the range doesn't change. So arc cos has a range between zero and pi. So that doesn't change regardless of what variable we're inserting into the function. So the range is still zero to pi. OK, so this is just information that we can all uh, we can just bear in mind for this video. Uh, so let's go on and start differentiating uh, the function then. So again, it's going to be a case of using the chain rule. So we want to differentiate with respect to x the function arc cos, so arc cos of 1 over x. So yeah, as I just said, it's going to be a chain rule problem because we've got a function arc cos of a function, the reciprocal function, which is a function of x in this case, and we're differentiating with respect to x. So again, using our chain rule, we've done this multiple times before. So in this case, we're going to differentiate the arc cos of 1 over x function, but with respect to 1 over x. And multiply this by the derivative of the 1 over x function uh, with respect to one uh, with respect to the variable x. So again, this is just by using the chain rule. So chain rule. And if we do this differentiation, uh, well, we need to know the derivative of the arc cos function first. And we know that already because we actually did that in a previous video. Um, so we know from a previous video that when you differentiate with respect to x, the arc cos of x function you get this result. So you get negative one over the square root of one minus x squared. Um, so if we just swap the variables around, so we're dealing with uh, a variable of one over x rather than x. So we can just swap the variables. So that's going to become a one over x inside there. That's going to become one over x over there. And so that means that the result is going to have a 1 over x instead of the x there. So 1 over x like that. And so we can just tidy this up a little bit. So we're going to get negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus 1 over x squared like so. OK, great. So now we can just plug this in to our result over here. So negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus 1 over x squared. And then we're multiplying that by the derivative of 1 over x. So we've done this a couple of times before. So this is just the same as differentiating uh, x to the power of minus one. So bring the minus one to the front, take away one from the power, you get negative x to the minus two, which is just the same as negative one over x squared like that. And again, we can just multiply top by top, bottom by bottom. So we get negative one times negative one, that's a positive one. So positive one over x squared multiplied by the square root of one minus one over x squared like so. Um, again, we can just actually simplify this 
uh, this third a little bit. So let's go to a new page. So you've got 1 over x squared multiplied by 1 minus 1 over x squared inside a square root. So we can bring out a factor of 1 over x squared inside that square root, which gives us 1 over x squared multiplied by x squared minus 1 like that. And again, what we can do, like when we differentiated the arc sine of 1 over x function, so we can just write this like this. So the square root of 1 is just 1. Square root of x squared, we can bring that outside to here. And we're multiplying this by the square root of x squared minus 1 like that. Uh, so again, we can just use our, our knowledge of uh, function definitions. So we know by definition that the modulus function is defined as uh, the square root of x squared. So the modulus of x is defined as the square root of x squared. So this down here is just going to be, so 1 over x squared divided by the modulus of x multiplied by the square root of x squared like so. And we also know that the modulus of x squared is the same as x squared. And so therefore, the modulus of x is equal to x squared over the modulus of x. Uh, so we've got the x, uh, x squared over the modulus of x there. So we can just swap this with the modulus of x. So let's just move this across over here. So this is equal to 1 over the modulus of x multiplied by x squared minus 1. And so, yep, so that is the result for the derivative of this function. So we know then that when we differentiate uh, arc cos of 1 over x, we get uh, 1 over the modulus of x multiplied by the square root of x squared minus 1. And of course, we've got a domain for this uh, this arc cos function. So uh, this is all valid for the modulus of x being greater than 1, as we can see uh, from over here. So the modulus of x is greater than 1 for this uh, to be true. Um, so yep, so that's our result. However, if you saw the previous video, we differentiated the function arc sec of x and we actually got the same results we got one over the modulus of x multiplied by the square root of x squared minus one so we got the same result um, and in fact we sketched this y equals arc sine of x function in the previous video so y equals arc sine sorry arc sec i should say uh, y equals arc sec of x so yeah this is something we sketched uh, and it was something that had a positive gradient for all x values in its domain. So it looks something uh, something like this. Um, and then you had like an asymptote up there. Uh, actually, let me just move this graph down a little bit. Move that down as well. So something like that. And uh, on this, uh, on this uh, negative part of the real axis, uh, again, you have something which kind of goes like this up to there. Um, so the, the domain for this function, again, was modulus of x greater than 1, because you had uh, a point of, uh, you had the x coordinate of 1 there, you had an x coordinate of negative 1 there, and uh, you have a range. So this went up to pi. And this asymptote here was at pi over 2. So yeah, this is something we did in the previous video. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's our domain. Let me just make this clear. That's the domain and the range of this arc sec function is uh, from zero up to pi. OK, so we know that from the previous video. So we can see the domain here is the same as the domain of this arc cos of one over x function. So the domain is the same. So domain modulus of x greater than one as well. So we've got two functions, this one and that one. They've got the same derivative. So when you differentiate the functions and calculate the gradient function, they're the same. They're defined on the same domain too. So that means that they must be the same function up to a constant. So the arc cos of 1 over x function and the arc sec function must be the same up to a constant. So therefore, arc sec of x equals 
arc cos sorry arc cos of one over x plus a constant okay so well what is this constant it's actually going to be zero and we can check that uh, now just by doing a bit of a, a bit of algebraic manipulation <coughs> so if we go to a new page and the trick is that we're going to let uh, y be equal to arc sec of x and then that means we can apply the sec function to both sides we get sec of y equals to sec of arc sec of x um, so this right hand side does indeed just equal x because sec and arc sec are inverse functions and this x is a variable so yeah the functions will cancel out so we get sec of y equals x now we know by definition what sec is so by definition sec is just the same as one over cos so you've got one over cos y there equals x. We can just rearrange this to make uh, cos y the subject of our formula. And if we do that, we get cos y equals one over x like so. Okay, so now then what we can do is we can actually apply the arc cos function to both sides of that equation. So we get arc cos of cos of y equals arc cos of one over x. Okay, so again, you may be thinking with this left-hand side, well, we've got the inverse function of the original function of y, so surely that left-hand side is just gonna be y because the, uh, the functions cancel out. Um, but, well, indeed it is actually true in this case. However, we've just gotta be careful because y is actually a function of x. So let's just make this clear. So y is not a variable, y is a function of x. So this is a function of x. Let me just squeeze the brackets x in there. So you've got a function of x here. So we need to check, does the range of this function or, or is the range of this function contained within the domain of this cos function? Because if the range of this y function, so if this y function goes beyond the domain that we're allowed for this cos function, in order for the arc cos function to be defined, then uh, it's impossible that we're going to get defined a defined left hand side. Basically, it's, it's impossible for that to work. So we've got to just be careful and check: Will this work? Is it possible for this to work if we have an injective cos function? And uh, indeed, it does. So we can just check this. So we need to check. So we need to check. is range so is the range of y a subset of the domain of uh, cos and when i say cos again i mean the injective uh, restricted domain of the cos function such that we have an inverse defined so the domain of the cos function is the same as the range of the arc cos function to so the range of arc cos so if the range of y is contained in the range of arc cos, then this is all cool. And uh, we just get y on the left-hand side. But let's just verify that and check that for certain. Just make this writing a little bit smaller, like so. OK, so the range of y, so range of y. Uh, sorry, let me move this s over, over here like that. Okay, yep. Um, so the range of y, so what does the range of y equal to? So y is this arc sec function. I actually sketched that before over here. So the range is from zero to pi. Okay, so the range of the arc uh, of the y function is zero to pi. What is the range of the arc cos functions? We sketched this back over here. So again, we see the range is zero to pi. Uh, so we've got a range of zero to pi, so the same range. So range of arc cos. So therefore the range of y is contained within the range of arc cos of x. And so therefore the range of y is a subset of the uh, the range of arc cos of x. So therefore, um, yeah, so since uh, pi uh, zero to pi over two 
is indeed a subset of zero to pi over two because subsets can be equal to each other. Um, so therefore it must be true that this up here is defined. So arc cos of cos of y is indeed defined. And so we just get y uh, for this uh, left-hand side over here. And the right-hand side there tells us that this y function is the same as the arc cos of one over x function. So y equals arc cos of one over x, but we set up here that y equals arc sec of x. So the conclusion we can draw from this, uh, this slide is that indeed arc cos of one over x equals the function arc sec of x. And so therefore then it's obvious why these derivatives are gonna be the same because, well, they're on the same domain and they're exactly the same function. So this constant here is just zero. And so indeed, uh, the key result from this video is that when you differentiate uh, with respect to x, the arc uh, cos function of one over x, you will get the same result as the derivative of the arc sec of x function because they're the same function and that result is this. So one over the modulus of x multiplied by the square root of x squared subtract one. And the domain for both of those functions is modulus of x greater than one because that's where both functions are defined uh, since both functions are just the same function.